Hi again, welcome. What I'm going to do is uh, solve this problem out like the real problem I did in class, uh, just to give you another example in perspective. I noticed that I am using some stuff that we might have done previously in physics, like how current is defined as volts over or voltage over R power. We could actually express power in a, a useful way, actually. Um, as energy per time, that's the definition of power, how much is energy exert per time. Or we could actually use force times velocity, that's actually a very useful thing I'm going to use here. Previously in friction, we also, um, in physics, we also know that friction is going to be mg mu. So these are all things I'm going to use to help solve some of these problems here. So let's take a look, it's a real problem. So we have this metal rod here that can move, it's moving at this speed, so this is our V. Um, the rod experiences some friction as you move it. It has a resistance and it's in a magnetic field. So the question is, what's the magnitude of the induced current? So induced current is going to come from the induced voltage divided by R. So in this case, our induced voltage is going to be the magnetic field V times L over R. So plugging in our values, we have that, the magnetic field is our 0 0.8 Tesla times how fast it's going, the 1.8 meters per second, times the length of our rod, which we just care about this part, um, which is 0 0.52 meters, divided by any resistance in our circuit, which is our 3 ohms. When we do this, we get 0.25 amps as our induced current. So that's all of part A. Calculate the magnitude of the force required to pull the right. So notice that it says this, the rod and reels have negligible resistance, but significant friction, um, and it has a value. So remember that when we pull this, so this is my force pull, if you will. In order for this to maintain constant speed, my force right has to equal left. That's to maintain constant speed. So my force pull has to equal two things. Um, first of all, we have friction uh, from this um, as directed in this problem, but also right hand rule tells us that the magnetic force on this wire actually goes this way. So part B, my force pull is equivalent, so my force to the right is equal to my force friction and my force magnetic, and that's in order to have a constant velocity. If these were different, this would no longer be a constant velocity. Um, we would have to do equals ma, but this is sufficient for now. So my force pull will be equal to force friction, which is force normal times mu. So my normal force in this case is just going to be the weight of the bar times mu. So mg mu plus the force due to this rod carrying the current. So it's I V L. So the mass of the rod is right here is 0.22. G is our constant, 9.81. And then it's looking for the coefficient of friction, which is going to be our 0.2 value right here. Then we're going to use the current that we calculated from A, the magnetic field, which is the 0.8 Tesla, and then the length of the rod again. So when you do that out, let's calculate it. I get 0.54 newtons of force to pull this. Okay, so part C, calculate the energy dissipated in the resistor in two seconds. So, <coughs> What we can do is, is find the electrical energy in this resistor. 
So when calculating the electrical energy, we can use IV, um, I squared R, etc. Any of those would be um, sufficient to solving for this. So let's find the electrical energy dissipated in um, two seconds. So what I'm going to do is um, find the power and then once I find power it's going to be equal to the energy per time. So if I want my energy it's going to be power times time. So it doesn't matter which of these I use. In fact I'll use I squared R. Why not? So my power is going to be I squared R. I squared is 0.25 amps squared times R. When I do that, I get 0 0.1875 watts. And then for my energy, it's going to be power times time. So 0.875 watts times 2 seconds. I get 0 0.375 and this will be in joules since it's energy. So that's part C. So I found my energy electrical because that's what we're looking at here. Here. Part D is finding the work done by the pull. So work is done by force times distance. Or in other words, my force pull times how far. Well, um, I don't have how far that bar went, but I do know that it went at a constant speed. And I do know the time it took, so um, V times T will give me how far that bar went. So it will be force pull times V times T. So force pull is what we calculated in part B. So 0.4 newtons, uh, 5.4, times how far it's fast it's going. That's so 1.8 meters per second. And the time it took, so 2 seconds. So what I get here is 0.19, oh I'm sorry, 0.54 times 1.8 times 2. That's what I thought. That's okay with me. Um, 1.94 joules of energy. So if you notice, um, the electrical energy and this energy are not the same. Um, and the reason for that is not all of the electrical energy um, is coming from the pole because our pole has friction and our magnetism coming from this. So in other words, um, when we pull this, we're not, like I said, we're not getting all the energy going into the electrical part. So that's the basic reasoning behind why those answers are different. Um, but more or less, I really care honestly about the first two questions most. You know, can you use this to find the induced current? And then knowing that when you pull this, you do have a magnetic force. So this is just another perspective on a type of problem you can see. Okay, I hope this was helpful.